So, hello everyone. I am Sergio, I am from Spain. And as you can see here, I am obsessed with supersonic flight and with supersonic aircraft. It is not because of the high speeds, it is because of the real consequences that it has on real life. Uh, for example, why does the noise of an airplane traveling supersonic um, sound like an explosion? Or why uh, it could break a window? Well, those questions made me fall in love with this topic a long time ago. So my objective here today is to replicate that into you guys because it is something very important. Oh, by the way, this is an F-18 Hornet from Swiss Air Force. Uh, the picture was taken by Nairon88, just to take credit of him. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, aircraft condensation. Well, we, uh, I think all we have seen those kind of pictures with condensation above the wings. But why is this really happening? Well, we have to use this, this equation to explain it, but it's the only equation that you are going to see here, so don't worry. Uh, we can see here that pressure and temperature are directly related. So if we change pressure, temperature is going to change also. So now, what do we know? Well, we all know that, uh, by the way, this is a computational fluid dynamics analysis of an airfoil. Um, we can see here how pressure is decreasing on the upper part of the wing and on the lower part of the wing, pressure is increasing. But for our purposes, we're just going to focus on the, on the first part because from the previous equation, we know that if pressure is decreasing, temperature is also decreasing. So condensation is appearing because when some specific, with some specific uh, humidity conditions in the atmosphere, if you uh, decrease temperature, uh, condensation will appear. Now, uh, this is the famous question, what is a shockwave? Well, I am going to explain it in the way that my teachers explained it to me, but I think it is incomplete, so uh, you will understand why. Uh, first of all, we, we imagine an object being static and creating sound. Okay, it could be an airplane or it could be myself just clapping, okay? So, uh, waves will start to propagate at certain speed. But now, if the object starts to move, that is what will happen. If the object now accelerates and uh, travels at the same speed that the than the waves, that is what will happen. And in the front part of the object, so, uh, waves will be concentrated in one point. And if now we accelerate even more, that is what will happen. Uh, a cone will be created, that is what we call the Mach cone, and all sounds will be concentrated in the surface of the cone. So we have here a video of an aircraft flying supersonic. Perdona por interrumpirte, pero el día de la presentación no funcionaba el sonido. Pero a ti, como estás viendo en YouTube, sí que te voy a poder poner el video. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Ya sabes, suscríbete ahí abajo si no estás suscrito todavía. Y seguimos con el video. Well, the sound is not is not working. So, it <laughs> well, don't worry. Um, so now, uh, what you were supposed to hear there was the sonic boom. The sonic boom is the sound that you hear when the when when the Mac cone reaches you. Okay, you will hear like an explosion. So here it comes the first misconception. People tend to think that uh, this sonic boom is produced because the engine, uh, sorry, the airplane is breaking the sound barrier while is traveling from subsonic speeds to supersonic speeds. Well, uh, that is wrong. As long as the airplane is moving supersonic, it will generate the Mach cone. So uh, you will hear the sonic boom when the cone reaches you. And here it comes the second misconception also, and very beautiful one. The sonic boom is not produced by the engine. It has nothing to do with that. And that is why I said before that the explanation was incomplete. I am going to try to explain, uh, to explain it with, with this example, okay? It is very important. Imagine that I throw a stone to the water. That is what will happen 
waves will start to propagate at certain speed. And the information of the disturbance is being transmitted with the waves. So now, if we have a duck moving slower than the speed of the waves, that is what will happen. And now imagine for a moment that I am on his trajectory, that the duck is coming to me. What will happen is that I will start to feel the waves, feel the waves, and then I will have to move away to let the duck pass. Yeah. But if the duck is moving faster than the speed of the waves, that is what will happen. And now imagine the same case. I am on his, on his trajectory. So the duck is coming to me and I won't feel anything. I won't feel anything. And then suddenly I will have to move away very fast to let the duck pass. This is exactly what happens on air. And this is the shock wave. We have here an F-22 Raptor. Imagine it's flying supersonic. So here, the air outside of the cone doesn't even know that an airplane is coming. And then suddenly the air will feel a strong push from the airplane. That is the shock wave. So because of that, uh, the air is being compressed so much through the shock wave. So we have here certain value of pressure and then inside of the cone, the pressure has increased so much. And that is the reason why the sonic boom is produced by any object that moves supersonic. For example, the Chelyabinsk meteor. Well, I had here an example, but the sound is not working. Uh, well, those windows uh, was, were broken because of the sound. Sorry about that. Okay, so now, from now on, when we are going to see this picture, we are going to imagine that the airplane is being static and that what is moving is the air. It will make everything easier. We have here the F-18, uh, Super Hornet. And here we have the supersonic cone here. No, it is not the supersonic cone. And this is the third misconception and so, so, so important. Well, why do I know that this is not the, the supersonic cone? Well, because we know that condensation appears when pressure and temperature are low, like in the upper part of the wing. But we also know that across the shockwave, pressure increases. So how in the world could it be a shockwave? Well, the, the answer is, it's not a shockwave. So where is the shockwave? Uh, just there. Why? Because condensation is disappearing so fast, like suddenly it's disappearing. And this is because across the shockwave, temperature is increasing and therefore condensation disappears. Uh, let's try to understand it with this example. This is another analysis of, a, of an airfoil. Here we have a subsonic uh, air. Uh, just to remind, imagine that the air is moving, okay? Uh, here we have a subsonic air. So this particle of air is moving subsonic, so nothing is really happening there. But here, air has accelerated because we know that on the upper part of the wing, the air Accelerate, accelerates. So in this region, the air has become uh, supersonic. So now we have in this region, in this uh, blue region, a lot of air um, going so, so fast. And then this air will suddenly collide against air that is moving slower. This air is moving slower, this air is moving faster, so they collide. And then we have a shockwave because we can see uh, with the colors that blue represents low pressure and there is a lot of low pressure here so you will he you will see the condensation in that part and then suddenly it changes to a lot of more pressure so uh, therefore uh, temperature increases and condensation disappears uh, there is shock wave and by the way the the um, where the shock wave is depends on the speed so if we accelerate the shock wave will will become something like that and please look at this. It is almost the same. Okay, so there it is the shock wave. Uh, so uh, if the object if the object is now uh, supersonic, uh, it will generate a Mach cone. And now if the 
uh, when the airplane became supersonic, this shockwave will start to turn until end up being something like that. So all aircrafts will have at least two shockwaves, which in real life they will have more. Here we have another example, but you can see on the canopy, on the upper part of the canopy, the condensation is appearing and then suddenly is disappearing because of because there is a shockwave right there. You can see the shockwave in this image here. Okay? And now, uh, why can we see the shockwaves? Okay? Why? Well, the phenomena is the same as here. The speed of light depends on the, of the density of the medium. So, across a shockwave, since the air is being compressed so much, the density is also increasing. So, the speed of light changes through uh, before the shockwave wave and after the shockwave. wave. So that is why we can see uh, shockwaves. waves. And for example, uh, it brings us the opportunity to see those amazing pictures. For example, this is an X-15 traveling supersonic. Or even better, this image was taken this year. Uh, it, they are two T-38 airplanes flying supersonic. Uh, and this one. This one is my favorite picture ever, I, I think. Here we have the Apollo 11 mission, leaving the Earth, going to the Moon. Uh, and we can see the phenomena there. The condensation is appearing because uh, pressure is decreasing and then suddenly it's disappearing because the shock wave. So I wanted to finish the presentation with this picture to thank those guys who went to the Moon. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. And yeah, I have a YouTube channel, so if you guys want to follow me, uh, it is in Spanish, so if you don't understand anything, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, honestly.